having just made our kimchi, we're now going to move on to kombucha, which is uh, pro perhaps one of the, the most well known of this little group of um, foods and drinks. And uh, it's so easy to, to make your own, and there's, there's probably nothing more satisfying. We're going to move on to kefir as well. Um, nothing more satisfying than growing your own um, foods, and then also when you're talking about fermentation, growing your own drinks as well. But a lot of people, like I said at the start of this chapter, get a bit scared when you're talking about bacteria and uh, yeasts and that kind of whole thing and making sure that you're doing it right and you're not making yourself ill. So stick with me on this and we'll take each stage um, as it goes. I've written a little bit of information on kombucha in your uh, workbook so check that out. Um, just check out all the health benefits and I'll just kind of let you read about that. This video though, this is one of the, the big advantages of having a video is you can come back to this time and again and you can look at your recipe and instructions and just take it step by step. So uh, the first thing you're going to need is a SCOBY, which some people incorrectly call a mushroom, which is this floating thing on top here. Now you may have found that uh, maybe a friend has given you a SCOBY, in which case you've got, probably got their support um, in terms of instructions and helping you do this. Um, or you can order them online and you'll get instructions when you get this little dehydrated SCOBY on what to do to turn it into a live SCOBY and grow another one. So assuming that you've got yourself a SCOBY, SCOBY stands for Symbiotic Colony of Bacteria and Yeast. Um, assuming you've got one of those, the next thing you're gonna need is uh, a big kind of jar like this. Now, this one is two gallons, and this one is a one gallon. Um, I've just got both because um, I usually use the, or usually have this two gallon one on hand, but, um, you know, just for the demonstration purposes, I've also got this two, uh, this one gallon a jar in as well. So just start where you want to start. If you don't think you're going to drink a lot of this to begin with or you just want to start small, go with the one gallon. Um, but two gallon is also a great investment. So what we've got in here is tea. Just regular, either black or green tea. It has to have caffeine in it for this to work. And what we've let this do is cool to room temperature. Now the strength of the tea, just um, you can look on the side of the, the, the box of the tea that you bought and see how many tea bags. You just make it as you would a regular tea um, to this kind of strength. And as I said, we've let this cool to room temperature and to which we're gonna add our sugar and also our starter kombucha. So this is kombucha that's already been made and this will get our tea to the right acid pH level. Um, the sugar is, you want an organic um, evaporated cane sugar. You, you don't want to use um, like a coconut sugar or turbinado sugar, any of those sugars that are really unprocessed and have the molasses still in them because it's not going to allow the right yeast and bacteria to form that you need. Although it look like it's working, it doesn't quite work out that way. Um, so as long as you go for organic, you know, no um, pesticides or herbicides when it's grown, no um, additives in terms of flavorings and um, colorings and all that kind of stuff. Just an organic evaporated uh, cane sugar. Um, you can actually add the cane sugar when the tea is warm if you want to help, if you want to make the, the sugar dissolve a little bit easier. Um, add the sugar when it's warm and then let it cool down and add your um, kombucha starter. So this is, again, if you've been given a kombucha scoby by a friend, they will also want to give you one of these um, little samples to make sure you get your pH level right or um, if you've grown your own from the dehydrated SCOBY then you'll have some of the mixture that you grew it from just following those instructions. Alright so our tea is cooled let's add in our sugar made kombucha sample. Just give that a stir around. As I said, if this was warm at this point, it would, it would help the sugar dissolve just a little bit quicker. But definitely let, let it cool down first before you put that kombucha in, before you put your scoby in, which is what we're about to do. Okay, so let me just put this one aside and then we'll bring this up. So normally this SCOBY will be floating right on the top, but we have uh, 
just been messing around with it before filming, so it's kind of sunk a little bit. Um, so what we need to do is take, I'm actually just giving you my hands a wash, a second wash, make sure they're completely clean, and we need to take a little bit of this SCOBY, let's take this out, and we need to cut this, and you can see that the, the baby is on top and the mother is down below, you can see a little mother down there, floating around. Um, we need to cut it with, we don't want to use any um, reactive metals, so just stay away from metals completely and just use a plastic, uh, a plastic knife or whatever you've got. Uh, but this is too big so we need to cut it down or you can just, if you don't want to cut it, you can just tear it. Just take a big, big old chunk of this. <laughs> Get there in the end. Put that to one side and pop that in there. And let it do its thing. Now, what you're going to find is that you'll need to cover that up. We're going to keep this on the countertop. And you want to cover it up with one of these towels or uh, a shirt or something similar. You don't want to use cheesecloth because fruit flies will get in there. It needs to be sealed. So we're going to put this, uh, I don't want to double that up, I'll just leave that like that, just so nothing can get in there. But it does need to be breathable because we're growing a culture in there, so it needs air to get into it, but no, no little flies. And so that just stays on the countertop. After about four days, you're going to notice a little film on the top will form. Um, don't uh, be tempted to kind of play around with it and stir it around, just leave it as it is. And uh, within 10 days to two weeks, it will be ready. You'll find that the SCOBY has grown a baby, so it's grown a, an extra one on top, and it will fill out usually to the sides of the jar, and then the mother underneath will be still connected, um, or it will just fall down to the bottom like that one did. Okay, so that just stays on the countertop. And then with this, this baby, I mean, each time you make a new batch, you're going to have a new one of these. So you can start donating and teaching people around you how to make kombucha. Um, or these compost very well, um, but you can only use them up to seven times. So, um, you know, this, the, the, the one that's left under here, we've already used once, so it's good for another six times. Um, so you can just start more, more batches um, or just get rid of it in terms of donating or composting. Um, so this is this is what most people will refer to as kombucha. Um, this is ready to flavour. So the great thing about this this whole process is, even though we're using like a, a semi-processed, we'll call it a semi-processed sugar. The during the process, a lot of that sugar gets eaten up anyway. So you end up with a mixture that's not particularly sweet um, and is just slight, it's slightly acidic, slightly kind of tart and. Um, Maybe even a little bit fizzy, but not a great deal at this point. So what we're going to do is, I'm actually just going to dip this into here. You always want to use glass. And to flavour this up, you want to put your pieces of fruit into there. So we're going to make this a strawberry kombucha. Uh, you know, just use your imagination in terms of what fruit you want to use. Blueberries, um, pineapple. Ginger, it's going to go on. And again, just leave that at room temperature on the side, and then after a couple of days, you'll end up with this level of delight. Um, so you can see the colour difference in those two. Obviously, the, the kombucha takes on the colour of the, um, of the strawberries. Mm. And that's, that's actually perfect for me, I don't like it sweetened too much. But if you wanted to sweeten it up and make it fizzy, you can use a sweetener like agave. Um, so you would, let's say this has been in here for a couple of days, it's got to that stage. You would remove all the fruit, um, set it to one side, and if you actually freeze that fruit, it makes a great ice cream. Um, set it to one side, put your extra sweetener in there, cover it up again for another two days. So you, what you're essentially doing is like a second stage fermentation because you're adding extra sugar 
to this, so it's more sugar for all the bacteria that are in there to eat. And with a sealed lid, you'll find it gets a little bit fizzy. So out for another two days, um, and then you'll have a, a, a sweet, a slightly sweet, uh, strawberry fizzy kombucha, and which can then go in the refrigerator until you're ready to use it. Um, also, I forgot to mention actually with these, if you want to just keep these, if you've got no plans to use it immediately, you can just store it in a little bit of the, um, the sugary kind of kombucha, um, any of these mixtures, and just keep it for two weeks to a month. Um, all you're doing in the refrigerator really is slowing down that process. It's exactly the same with any, any kind of fermentation process. By putting it in the fridge, you're just slowing everything down and allow you to, to maybe not use it immediately if you're not ready to. Okay, so um, there's a lot to take in there, but with this video that you've got, you can go back and revisit and the instructions you've got in your workbook. Um, give it a go, don't be scared, and uh, as always, have fun with it and just try out different flavours and enjoy the process of making your own food and your own drinks and, uh, and getting healthy in the process.